All right, so welcome everyone. Hello, my name is Emily. I'm a physical therapist at Rogue and I'm coming at you from Tucson, Arizona. So this is my home here. Welcome, so good to see all of you. I'm gonna just keep an eye on the waiting room here so that I can make sure I let everyone in. Um, and then also just to let you guys know what the structure of our webinar is today. I have a presentation with some videos for you. And so if you want to go ahead and just hold your questions until the end, that would be great. Because a lot of times I answer questions as we get started. And so if you want, you can always use the chat feature if you have a question in mind that you don't want to forget, because I'll look back at the chat at the end to answer those questions. And then you'll have a chance to unmute and ask questions then. Um, but for now, we'll go ahead and hold questions till the end, and, um, and we'll make sure we leave time to get those answered. So again, welcome. My name is Emily, physical therapist at Rogue. I'm excited to talk to you today about um, exercise as medicine and how it helps people with Parkinson's, and then how we implement that with our online program called Rogue in Motion. So we'll go through a couple success stories from our clients. These are people with Parkinson's that we've worked with that we have seen exercise has helped them get better and stay better. We'll go through our top five tips for Parkinson's specific exercise and then tell you a little bit more about our online program, Rogue in Motion. In my experience as a physical therapist the past seven years, I've worked both one-on-one -on -one with people with Parkinson's and also taught group exercise classes for people with Parkinson's. And I have seen that exercise can help people improve their mobility and also improve their quality of life and also help them maintain those benefits over time. So not only get better, but stay better over time. In addition, exercise can help to treat the motor and non-motor symptoms of Parkinson's. So the motor symptoms are more things like tremor or rigidity or slowness of movement. And the non-motor symptoms are things like poor sleep or constipation, anxiety, things like that. And so in my experience, I have seen how exercise helps people to improve both those motor and non-motor symptoms. In addition, life happens where maybe we experience a sickness or a hospitalization or a fall. And in my experience, the people who are exercising consistently, they build up a resiliency where they're able to bounce back from those types of situations more quickly. So with that in mind, I'm going to talk through three different case examples of clients we've worked with who have Parkinson's and how exercise has helped them. So my colleague, Claire McLean, she's a physical therapist who started Rogue and Rogue is an actual location. So it's a gym for people with Parkinson's located in Huntington Beach. And so she started this gym because she had a passion for working with people with Parkinson's. And these are all clients who go to see Claire and the team there in person at Rogue. So here we have Anne. She is a member at Rogue. She was diagnosed at 40 years old and she's now 56. When she was diagnosed with Parkinson, she was still working. And so she was not able to exercise quite as much. And she was on more dopamine medication. But then once she started exercising and doing physical therapy, she was actually able to decrease the amount of meds that she needed over time. She's exercising five to six days per week, doing cardio, power moves, and circuit training, which we'll talk more about. Um, in the slide there, you see LEDD. So what that means, it's, it's lev levodopa equivalent. So it, it's a a formula that's calculated where you put all your different dopamine meds into that calculator and it just gives you a number on how much medication that you're on. So Anne was on 1500 milligrams in 2012. And then in 2021, she's on a thousand. So she's actually on less dopamine medication. And that's because she is exercising so vigorously. Let's show you some examples of the types of exercises she's doing. So you can see Claire is helping her a little bit there, get her feet in the straps, the TRX straps to hold a plank. 
She's doing burpees, battle rope slams, uh, super athletic movement there. And this is again, Rogue. So the gym there in California. And really the summary here is that we treat our clients like athletes. And we take what we do in person at the gym here and we've brought it to our online program so we can help you exercise just as vigorously as Anne is here. So next, let me tell you about Dennis, who's also a member at Rogue. He was diagnosed in 2001 and had DBS surgery in 2007. He's now 72 years old. In the video here on the left, you can see him on the treadmill in 2013 when he came to Rogue. He was taking short and fascinating steps there. So we were a little scared with, with his quality on the treadmill. But then he started doing five days a week, the cardio training where he was on the treadmill, getting lots of practice, taking big steps, heart rate monitoring, also doing power moves classes. So whole body functional movement and circuit training as well. And you can see in the video in 2017, his steps definitely look better. So this is years later, even maintaining what um, improvements he made when he first came to the gym. And then in 2019, he's holding, he's not having to hold on to the treadmill. He's taking big steps and he's much improved from when he came into uh, see Claire and the team in 2013. The video here shows his walking over ground and how it improved. So both in February of 2017 and then in September of 2019, you can see he's taking big steps. He's swinging his arms. He looks even more confident in how he's walking there. Walking is a very important type of exercise that we promote for all our people with Parkinson's. So yes, Dennis practiced the treadmill, but also it helped translate to better walking over ground as well. Next, we have Terry, who's also a member at Rogue. And Terry is, uh, she was diagnosed at 62 years old, and that was about over 11 years ago. She's 74 now. And when she came to the team at Rogue, she, was, she said, hey, I want to learn how to jump rope. That's going to that's gonna be my goal. She also did five days a week, was committed to cardio training on the stationary bike, doing power moves and also circuit training. And it's not like she necessarily practiced jump roping all the time, but she did practice things like jumping while being supported on the TRX strap, for example. She was practicing the types of skills and movements that would be needed to help make jump roping easier. And the video here shows her progress. So in 2016, when she tried it the first time, you can see she's having some trouble stepping over the rope and she's doing it a little more slowly. Then in, um, later on in December of 2016, you can see she's getting a little frustrated trying that skill, but she's making progress and sticking with it. February 2017, I love that still shot of her smiling there <laughs> because she's doing it a little easier. Let me play this again. And then finally, she is cranking it out in December of 2019. So Terry um, is a huge advocate of having a goal and sticking with it. And in the videos throughout time here, you can see she definitely got better at that skill. So what do these three people have in common? They're doing better than average, even over a long period of time. So Claire has worked with these individuals for many, many years, and she's still working with them. And they're they were able to get better and also stay better with exercise. They're exercising consistently and at a high intensity five days a week, performing a variety of exercise, including cardio, power moves, circuit training. Their medications were optimized so that they were able to get the benefits of exercise and maybe even decrease the amount of medication they needed to take. Also, they were working with the coach and getting feedback on their exercise. 
So with that in mind, that was Claire's gym that is still in operation today. Members are starting to come back in person, but with the pandemic hitting, she said, let's go ahead and transition our, our exercise program online. And so we've been able to make this type of exercise available to people all over the country and world. It's great meeting new people, um, some of you just said you're from New York. Awesome. I think the silver lining of COVID is it gives us a chance to connect and help give you access to this type of exercise. So with Rogan Motion, our online program, we offer live Zoom classes. And also we have a very extensive video library of all the pre-recordings. So most of our Zoom classes start about 8 or 9 a.m. Pacific time and we offer multiple classes a day. If you can't join us live, no worries. We have a lot of members from the East Coast who make use of our video library where we upload every single class that we teach in that library. So our top five tips for exercise. What you do for exercise is important. How you exercise is important. It's important to be consistent with your exercises. Enjoy how you're exercising and then building your team and connecting with your community. So we're gonna go through each of these tips. First of all, what you do for exercise is important. The research suggests progressive aerobic training and also functional skill training is important. So here's an example of a member at Rogue doing progressive aerobic training on the treadmill at the gym there. So whether you have access to a treadmill or a bike at home, or maybe you wanna to go to your local gym and play one of our cardio classes while you're at the gym so that you can get that coaching. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean you can't exercise if you are not in California. You can use our recordings and use what equipment you have or even go for a walk outside make use of a pool in your area. There's a lot of different ways you can get aerobic training in. And this is another example. So this is Terry, who I showed you in the video, cranking it out on the bike, doing interval training. And power moves, let's talk about that. So I have a picture here that has a, a nice display of what power moves are. So some of you might have heard of, of these types of movements. Essentially, they're whole body functional skills that are important for people with Parkinson's. So Parkinson's affects your ability to do whole body movement, like getting in and out of the car, getting out of bed, getting out of chairs. And so we practice those building blocks of function and practice moving in multiple positions so we can do those skills. For example, you can see we exercise on our bellies, on our backs, on hands and knees. So we definitely do a lot of floor work. And then in addition, sitting and standing moves. These types of whole body movements can be integrated into other forms of exercise like boxing, dancing, Tai Chi, strength training, and balance training, for example. The research is very strong behind especially aerobic exercise and how it helps people. So in general, cardiovascular training helps to make your heart muscles stronger and your blood vessels healthier to prevent things like cardiovascular complications. Also, it can help strengthen your bones to prevent osteoporosis, improve your cognitive function, prevent depression, improve your sleep decrease constipation and fatigue, and even to optimize your dopamine system so that you can use what dopamine you do have more effectively or even help you to not have to take so much dopamine medication, for example, because you're improving your brain's ability to use the dopamine it has. This is a, an article by, a summary article by Dr. Alskog, who's a movement disorder neurologist in Minnesota. And I'm just gonna read you the conclusion of his article here because I feel like it says it all. And he summarizes that a regular aerobic type exercise tending to lead to fitness is the single strategy with compelling evidence for slowing Parkinson disease progression. All people with Parkinson's should be encouraged to engage in such regular exercise. 
So I love that because it just is saying, we know aerobic training is super promising and helping you function better and could even have some promise to slow the progression of Parkinson's. So how do we get started with that? Um, we'll talk about that a little bit later. So first of all, let me present another study on what intensity of exercise is important. This was a study that was done in people who were more newly diagnosed and they were doing treadmill training four times a week and monitoring their heart rate. So there were three different groups, um, a max uh, high intensity group that had their heart rate at 80 to 85% of their max heart rate a moderate intensity group that had their maximum heart rate at 60 to 65%, and then a usual care group that got no intervention. So when they looked at these different groups at the six month mark, the people who were in the high intensity group had a less worsening of their motor symptoms over time. And so the UPDRS was the outcome measure used on that. And that is essentially just measuring how bad your stiffness is, your slowness, your tremor, things like that. And so the group that was exercising at 80 to 85% of their heart rate max, so that's really intense exercise, that group only had a 0.3 worsening in their motor symptoms compared to the moderate intensity had a 2.0 worsening of their symptoms compared to the usual care group had the worst, um, the, the biggest worsening of their motor symptoms after six months. So this suggests the high, that higher intensity is better. So how do we make that happen? There is a website that I'll, um, I can definitely include um, in the chat box at the end where you can actually enter what your max or what your age is and your resting heart rate. And it will actually calculate your max heart rate. And you can look to see what those zones are for you so that you could kind of follow along with that study I just showed you. So for example, I went to the website and I just said, okay, I'm 65 and here's my resting heart rate. It calculated my max heart rate is 155. And then over here, I've got my numbers down on, on what my heart rate should be in those different zones. So you could even go to that website, calculate it, write those numbers down and have it as a target zone for you as you're doing your aerobic exercise. Next, monitoring your heart rate. And again, I'll include in the chat later on, um, the name of this brand of a heart rate monitor that we recommend. So that green band just goes right around your forearm and you can purchase that from the internet and download the Wahoo app on your smartphone. And you can actually monitor your heart rate real time while you're exercising to see how vigorous you're being. You can also of course use things like an Apple watch or a Fitbit. First, your goal is maybe to spend at least 30 minutes three times a week with your heart rate above that 60% heart rate max. Then can you go for longer maintaining that same intensity or even go for higher intensity, trying to aim for like that 80 to 85% that we saw in that study? That's what we know is gonna be super important to get to that threshold for making actual change. How do we get there? So for our online program, we do offer a cardio class. I'm gonna show you a clip here of Claire coaching you through some intervals on the bike. So if you have a bike at home or a treadmill at home, it's a great option to hop on and join us live or watch the recording. Or again, could you go to a local gym you have access to and hop on a machine and play the recording there? All right, it is time for our first speed one interval. So on the bike, get into those 60 to 70 RPM range if you aren't already. Once you're there, add more resistance. What's the most resistance you can do and still stay in that 60 to 70 RPM range. You probably can handle more than you think. It's comfortable with low resistance, but we want to work. That's how we get better, is by challenging ourselves, challenging our bodies, our brains. On the treadmill, speed one, 
So not your faster speed, but it should be a brisk, vigorous pace. It's not supposed to be slow or anything like that. So you can see that Claire is giving you some guidance on, hey, I want you to be at this revolutions per minute, which is a, me a measure of your speed, and just giving you some feedback on what that should feel like to help you get to those vigorous zones. I know I like to go to cardio classes because it's really tough to get motivated to do this on your own, but if you have a coach and someone guiding you, it's a little easier to work out at those higher intensity levels. So we also have, as one of our core classes, power moves, those whole body functional skill training classes. This slide here is just giving some visuals to give you a preview as to what power move classes are like. So this is a video of Steph showing you how to do a power up on all fours. Lower that chest, bend the elbows, big power up, two. Down and up, three. Down and up, four. Down and up, five. Down and up, six. Down and up, seven. Down and up, eight. Down and up, nine. Down and up, 10. So that's an example of us getting on the floor, working it out, working on posture, which is really important. And we also are on our backs and on our bellies, great place to stretch out and work on mobility. And no worries if you cannot get to the floor, that's tough for you. Our power move classes also have different modifications that we can offer for those positions. And also we do exercises both in standing and in the chair. We also have an online boxing class. So I'm gonna show you just a quick clip of Jamie here showing you what our boxing class is like. For non-dominant, work on the other side. It's jab, cross, hook, cross with that step. I'll count these ones out with us. Here we go. Jab, cross, hook, cross. That's one. Hands up. Jab, cross, hook, cross. Come at them. Good, hands up. Jab, cross, hook, cross. That's three. You got it. Hands up. Jab, cross, hook, cross. Come forward towards. So you can see we have lots of sequencing that we add, which is a great way of adding cognition, learning different punches. We even have some agility that we add in there. So it's all shadow boxing for that. We also have a high intensity um class also known as a hit class so let me just show you this is me demonstrating a couple of the higher intensity exercises that we do that's two three back four back keep breathing five back six so that's a tough one takes a lot of mobility again we offer modifications for that um Here's so another one. We're doing some aerobics, some jumping Option. jacks. Add your arms. Option. You could even hold on to a wall and maybe you're here just jumping with one arm to support, hands to a chair or couch in front of you. Whew. So I was showing a couple ways to modify, hold on to a chair or a wall. Go ahead, get ready. Here's our timer, 40 seconds on, simple but effective. Up and down, making sure you're rocking forward. Option, you need a little more? Add that hop at the top, hop at the top. <laughs> you got it. I love the sit to stand. It's very functional. It's something we do every day, whole body. I was trying to guide you through, giving you some cues on how to do that a little more easily. And then this is one of my favorite high intensity moves as well. Just and high knees. Our cardio move. Getting those legs evened out after that balance drill. You got it. Maybe you want to change the arms a little bit. You could be here out to the side if you have any shoulder pain. This is a good option. 
So that was a good example too of a lot of people maybe have old injuries where they have impingement in their shoulder and can't reach up. So we keep that in mind when we're instructing the classes and offer ways around that to say, just bring your arms out to the side rather than up, for example. Again, can't make it live, no worries. We upload all our recordings of those hour long classes, but we also are adding to our video library um, with different things like shorter clips of ways to modify the exercises using a chair, for example. And even I did a whole series on functional activities. I had a ton of fun making it where I said, what are common activities we need to do throughout the day? And let me do a quick five minute video on how to do that more easily if you have Parkinson's. So I have things like doing your laundry, getting up off the floor, getting in and out of your dining room chair and out of bed, for example. So that was a fun one. Um, little clips on how to do those functional movements a little easier. And here, let me just give you a preview to one of those videos. I'm going to get my feet wide apart, have a seat. And then from here, rocking side to side to get some momentum going. This is lay down a little more easily. So I'm shifting my weight side to side and then using that momentum to help me swing my legs up and lay down. So i sorry if the volume was a little low on that. I'll have to bring that up. But just explaining from my experience in working one-on-one -on -one with people with Parkinson's, what are some tips that can help make that skill a little easier? Our second tip is that how you exercise important is important. So in, we know that intensity matters as we saw in that study. We wanna think high intensity and challenge yourself to work harder than is comfortable. Knowing that if you have old injuries or limitations, modifying as needed and start exercising as soon as you're diagnosed with Parkinson's to be proactive. Our goal is to prevent decline um, and help people get better and then stay better with exercise over time. Even if you've been diagnosed for a while and you're new to this type of exercise, no worries. We recommend let's get started sooner than later to help be proactive. When we think about intensity, I just want to present one more quick study on how high intensity is important. This study was done by Jay Albert's group out of Ohio, and they looked at forced use cycling. There was a forced use group and a voluntary group. The people who were in the forced use group were cycling on a tandem um, cycle, and they were encouraged to pedal beyond their self-selected effort, so beyond what was comfortable. They had a coat on the back of their tandem cycle who was encouraging them to work harder than they would normally. And then the voluntary group, they just got to cycle at whatever pace was good for them. The group that was in the forced exercise group that was working beyond their self-selected effort, their motor scores improved by 35%, whereas those who were in the voluntary did not have any improvement. So this is just another example of how forced use and working hard in that high intensity zone is important. So with that in mind, we do have lots of different intensity options with our exercises. So over Zoom, we are offering different intensities for each of the exercises, but I would say our, our high intensity class that I showed you clips of, as well as the boxing classes, those ones are definitely more on the challenging end, um, whereas some of our other classes are not quite as intense. And again, our video library has a ton of different ways on how to make things easier. Um, here's a video clip that shows a modification, for example. Move looks like I'm shifting my weight back, stepping my foot up. If that's too much because our hips are really tight, so if our foot is getting stuck back here, first of all, try weight shifting more onto one side so you can step the foot up. But if that's still not working, no problem. Let's bring our hands to a chair. You guys know the drill, knees wide. We're gonna rock to one side, step the foot to the side of the chair, back down, and let's try the other side for two. Nice work. So I was showing how to make that exercise just a little easier by using a chair. The next 
tip that we have for exercise is to be consistent with your exercise. I think this one is super important. I have a lot of clients who are exercising, but maybe only like twice a week. And they tell me, I don't really feel like I'm getting better. And the reason is because you're not quite getting that frequency of exercise that you need to feel and maybe see a change. We want to be exercising at a minimum three days a week, ideally 30 to 120 minutes per day. And ideally, we're at six to seven days per week. In this study by Dr. Mishley, who's a naturopathic doctor out of Seattle, she looked at people's pro-PD score, which is a self-assessment measuring your experience of your symptoms with Parkinson's like tremor, slowness, fatigue, memory, for example. They uh, surveyed people to say, how much do I have to exercise and how many of the past seven days per week did I do at least 30 minutes of exercise? The more days per week that people exercised, the fewer symptoms they reported over time. Two days per week of exercise did not translate to slower disease progression over time, but at three days per week, and then for each day after, there was a significant impact on people's symptoms. A normal change in a pro PD score is about a worsening of 38 points per year. So based on the data that you see on this slide, the people who were exercising seven days per week had an impact of six and a half years of less symptoms. So the years of, um, it was years of difference in terms of their symptoms. So the more exercise, the better. How do we get that type of exercise? And that frequency, that's why our online program offers classes every single day. So there's a lot of choices here and a lot of opportunities to get your seven days of exercise in per week. One of our classes I wanna highlight is a speech class. So people with Parkinson's usually re report a change in their speech where they have a softening of their voice. And a lot of times people maybe go to speech therapy, they're given exercises to do, but maybe are not keeping up with them. That's totally normal. And that's why in our online uh, program, we offer twice per week classes with Stephanie, our speech therapist over Zoom, where you can actually practice your voice real time and get feedback. Let me show you a quick clip of one of our classes here. I wanna be reclined back, no looking at the ceiling, okay? Amy, my, my, So Don, you saw how it's all connected. My voice was on, it was working the whole time and it was pretty loud, right? So when we're doing this, we're working all the musculature in your neck and throat for swallowing and for speech. Okay, let's try it again. Awesome. So yes, you can see lots of good practice to strengthen your voice and even getting some feedback on how your voice sounds if you would like that. Our next tip is to enjoy how you exercise. So personally, I love being here in Tucson because for me, hiking is a big type of exercise that I enjoy. So if it's something I enjoy doing, I'm going to be more likely to stick with it over time. It's important to do things you enjoy, but also recognize that with the type of exercise that's evidence-based for Parkinson's, we do want to challenge ourselves to try things that are difficult as well. Using the buddy system can be helpful. So picking a friend and say, hey, every Tuesday morning, we're going to go get our, our walk in together. That can be super helpful. And then integrating um, just the different resources that you have. So now that COVID is slowing down, maybe the gym that you used to go to is opening back up. That's great. Make use of your in-person resources. And we're hoping that our online program can also just be a way to help you um, fill in the gaps for your exercise. So let's say transportation is an issue, or maybe you're traveling and you don't have access to your gym. The online classes can be a great way to get that type of exercise in so that we're getting that frequency of ideally seven days a week. 
we like to make it fun. So I introduced you guys to Izzy, my golden doodle puppy. So she's running around and exercising with us. And we like to do different themes to keep it fresh and interesting. So we work maybe more on strength one week and then more flexibility and mobility, for example, and then balance. So we are always changing it up and having a different plan for each class. Um, to keep it fun and interesting. A lot of times too, we'll start class just a little early. And by that, I mean, we open up the Zoom call and just say, hey, let me know where you're from. Do you have any questions? And stay a little bit after class as well. And that helps us form our community and connect with each other and have some fun. So that brings me to stay connected to your community. The worst thing is to withdraw. Um, I think especially for people with Parkinson's because we know that dopamine is used in our social circuits as well. So a lot of times in Parkinson's, we see apathy where people maybe withdraw. And I think COVID probably just made all of that even worse for all of us. So it is important to get back out there, make use of your in-person resources and also online. Finding a coach for life in your Parkinson's specialized physical therapist, for example, socialize with your friends and family, and join our community here at Rogue. So this is a picture of who we are. So on the top left, those are your four physical therapists who teach the online exercise classes. So we have lots of variety in your instructors. And we've got our in-person members at Rogue as well. Um, and we have people, this client here, her name's Susan, and she is uh, a person with Parkinson's from the UK. So the online community has been great to connect us all over the globe. And um, Izzy, of course, my golden doodle, Maya, Claire's dog, we're all part of the community. One extra tip I just wanted to sneak in. I hope you guys found some inspiration in those videos from our clients in that believing you can get better. So each of those clients had a coach who believed in them and they also believed in, their self, in themselves knowing that they could get better and stay better with exercise. Um, so that's an, a really important tip as well. With that in mind, we'd love to have you guys join us. We have lots of options to join our membership. For joining the webinar today, if you guys want to use the promo code WEBINAR50, which at the bottom right-hand side is a little preview of what the website looks like and where you enter the promo code, you would get 50% off your first month. Full price is normally $49.99 every month, so you would get that seven-day free trial, cancel any time, and 50% off your first month by entering that webinar 50 code. And you can also do a yearly membership if you would like as well for $4.99.99. If you join the membership, we do offer 30-minute um, or 60-minute one-on-one calls with me, Emily. And so we do that over Zoom. If you join the monthly, we'll do a 30 minute together where we can answer any questions, even look at what you're currently doing for exercise, make some recommendations on how the program can work for you. And then if you do join the yearly, you get a complimentary 60 minute visit with me. So lots of options. We'd love to have you guys. And with that in mind, I thought we could, um, take the next part of the presentation to get a little movement and exercise in together as a preview to the type of exercise that we do. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we'll come back and actually I'll leave the slide up so you guys can um, mark any of that down if you would like. Let's do some exercise together and then we'll make sure we take questions. So before we stand up, cause we've been sitting for a while, see if you can just march your legs big. A lot of times once we've been sitting, it helps to just move our legs, warm them up a little bit. Nice, now feet wide apart, rock forward and back to get some momentum. And then let's stand up, have our best posture, and then just make your way over to an open space. Feel free to stay sitting if you want. I'm gonna teach you guys our standing power up exercise. So feet are wide apart. We're gonna come down into a squat, sending our hips back, and then power up, open up through your chest, spreading your fingers wide. Good, let's do one more slow. Come on down into that squat, 
and then power up, open up through your chest. Great, being as tall as you can. Let's go ahead and count 10 all together a little faster. We come down, power up one, down, power up two, down, power up three, nice, down, power up four, really open your hands, down, power up five, down, power up six, down, power up seven, down, power up eight, down, power up nine, last one, down, power up 10, great. Let's rock, so shift your weight from side to side, keeping your feet wide apart, that helps with balance. Now we're gonna rock and reach, right arm over to the side, almost like you're reaching for something in your top cabinet in your kitchen. Now let's shift over to the other side, reaching big. Good, we're gonna do 20 in a row back and forth. I want you to go as big and fast as you can with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Really open your hands, 11, 12. Can you go bigger, 13, 14, nice, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Great. Rock it out, catch your breath. Now we're gonna do five of our sit to stance because I love this exercise so much. So grab your chair. You're gonna scoot to the edge of the chair, get your feet wide apart and tuck them underneath you. We're gonna rock forward, stand up, power up. Best posture, good, come down. Let's count five more together. Stand up, power up one, come down, and up for two, down, and three, go big, down, rock forward big, four, down, last one, five, and down. Great work. So that was just a, a quick sample of some of our favorite exercises that we like to do in our class. So I hope you enjoyed it. Grab water if you need to, stretch your legs. And then from here, I'm happy to take any questions. I'm gonna just uh, stop sharing my screen, but I can always pull that back up if anyone needs it. Let me just see if I have anything in the chat. Feel free to unmute if you have questions. And while you guys are thinking of questions, I'm gonna um, go ahead and paste in the chat there the resource for calculating your heart rate if anyone wants to click on that link if you're interested. And I'll also put the name of that heart rate monitor because it's difficult to spell. <laughs> All right, so heart rate website. And then let me get the name of the heart rate monitor. Does anyone have any questions? You guys are all experts in exercise now, huh? No questions. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Yeah, Greg, did you want to ask a question? Well, I, I just wanted to say I'm signed up for something that's at the site location in Fountain Valley for Saturday. Okay, yes. And I'm, I'm going to attend that in person with a couple of other parking friends of mine. Good. That's great. You? So you're right there. So um, you're, have you been to Rogue before then and done some classes and all of that? I have not, but I've, okay. I've, I've been very uh, uh, interested. Okay. Right. Yes. 
Well, mm-hmm. I'm glad. So you'll be able to meet Claire and the team and, um, and join in on the Saturday event. And then I'm sure she'll get you all set up with all the in-person options, which will be great. And, you, and a lot of our in-person members are also doing the online classes as well. So it's a really nice mix where they come in person for some classes, but then are doing some of the exercise from home too. So know that you've got lots of options, especially since you are right there in person. That's great, Greg. Do you have balance exercise? Yes, good question. So balance is a really common thing that we hear people want to work on. And so we, I would say like all of our exercises are going to help with balance because um, a lot of things are contributing to balance problems. For example, mobility. So in order to be able to catch ourselves and have good balance, we need to be flexible, for example. So our all of our power move classes, um, which I had shown a video of and we did a couple together, but even the exercises on the floor, for example, I'll just give you a preview. So if I'm here, if I'm working on my hip flexibility with this exercise or even stretching out here, for example, that's going to help me have better balance because I'm less rigid in my hips, for example. So we have a lot of our classes focus on that, on having that mobility and even getting to our bellies. So like this, do you see how, if I'm in this position, I'm working on having good posture, for example, and that's going to help me to stand more upright and do that power up exercise we did. And that helps me to prevent falls and have better balance. So mobility is a key part of balance. Um, But then also even practicing like some stepping here, right? Moving big. We do these types of exercises. And we actually have a whole theme class on Tuesdays where we do challenge your balance even more, where maybe we're practicing standing on one leg. Maybe we close our eyes, turn our head, those sorts of things, or change our base of support to be a little more narrow. So we do have that Tuesday theme where we focus in especially on balance, but really all of our classes are going to be working on balance because mobility is super important for balance and even cognition as well. Does that make sense? There's a lot of different factors that that go into that. But that brings up a good point that the exercises that we do will help with balance. But if you do want to get your balance assessed or work more specifically on it, one-on-one, we definitely recommend seeing a Parkinson specialized physical therapist in your area so that they can help, you know, do that comprehensive assessment to focus on your balance specifically. Do you have anything with fatigue? Um, Repeat the last part, anything that what? Fatigue. Fatigue, oh, good question, yes. Um, I would say aerobic exercise. So I feel like a lot of times with fatigue, people are maybe not in great shape and need to improve their endurance. So I would start with, can you get on a stationary bike, for example, and start doing some of our cardio classes to build your endurance a little more. And a lot of times I find that people feel more rejuvenated after they exercise and that helps with the fatigue but even just starting where you are. So I know I I said, hey, our classes are an hour long and ideally we're getting to that high intensity zone, but maybe some of you have not been exercising in this way. I think starting with where you are and then building up to that is a great way to improve your endurance, which should help your fatigue. Because I do still want you to, you know, have the energy to do the things you need to do throughout the day. Um, So, If you haven't been exercising a ton, starting with where you are and then building up from there is important. 
Emily, I have a question. So the, the $50 a month fee, what does it include? Is one class or all the classes? All the classes, yep. So if you guys join our membership, that calendar I had shown you, which let me just pull it back up. Um, let me actually pull that up so I can keep my subtitles going here. So for our online classes, for our online classes, you would have access to all of this as a member. So you could join us live every day, Monday through Saturday, we have classes, or you can use the video library. So the membership includes the Zoom link to all of our live classes. And then in addition, if you cannot make it live or you wanna, or you can make it live and you just wanna watch the recording later, you get a login to Vimeo that we use to organize our videos and you can log in anytime and play any of those classes. So we have boxing classes, high intensity classes, cardio, power moves. And then we also have educational series, um, which is things like lectures on fall risk, for example, in balance um, and even more on voice. We have our speech therapist give a presentation about voice and we have nutrition information as well. So every month we're updating with a new educational talk as well. And you can find the recording in the library. Great question. Any other questions? Uh, what about those of us that have had knee replacements and can't get down on the floor? Great question. That comes up a lot for sure. Um, so with that, a couple of things. So, um, have, and I'm going to pull it up on Amazon because I recommended this to someone on our last webinar and they said that it worked great. Gorilla kneeling pad. And then I'm going to share my screen here. So sometimes I find that just a little extra support can help. So do you guys see here this, it's a, a thick pad that just adds a little extra, depending on how thick your yoga mat is, for example. I usually find that people with knee replacements just need a little extra support. And you can kneel either directly on that or even you can have, um, let me see, let me grab my mat one second. So you can even grab, let's say this is that kneeling pad. You could even just have it so that your knees are hovering off of it. Oh, and of course, let me try it. My angle is not going to work out on that. But essentially, if you are here and your knee is it's on your shin, the kneeling pads on your shin, then you're not putting direct pressure on the knee. That is something that I have also heard works well. But if it's tough to make that actual process to get up and down off the ground, you could try using a chair. So hands to your chair like this to come down usually helps take some pressure off the knee and that might be a good place to start. Does any of that seem realistic based on where you are if you want to share? Because I, I do get that question a lot. And I, but I still do think it's important to have the range and the mobility to get down there. And if it's scary, I think, you know, working with someone one on one to help with that is great. And we could even do that during our 30 minute visit. If you have someone there to help, I can help kind of guide and work 
on problem solving, how to get to the floor, because it is an important skill and something that I think people can definitely work up to. Did that answer your question? Yes, thank you okay. for that. Good, thank you so much. I know I feel like I need to just go ahead and add a slide about that because pretty much every time I've given this talk, someone's asked that question. Great question. <laughs> Thanks. I'm making a note, kneeling pad. I think I will just add a slide about that. Um, we love the floor because it is an important place to practice. Um, maybe you have to do some cleaning down there. Or for me, I, my dog always rolls a ball under the couch. So I have to, the other day, I had to get all the way to my belly to reach under and grab that ball. <laughs> Um, and then even if you did have a fall, it's good to just have the confidence and know you can get up, right? So it's something we can definitely work on one-on-one -on -one. and even just in class, we get lots of practice with that transition and exercising there. A question, if you're working out a line, um, how, how do you know? that you're not doing too much. How do you know you're not pushing too hard to the point that you're gonna injure yourself? Yeah, great question. That's where I do feel like seeing a physical therapist one-on-one -on -one in your area is a great idea um, because <clears throat> then they can kind of do a full assessment of your medical history and give you some recommendations based on any injuries you might have. Um, and that's even why we do include that 30 minute visit with me if you join, because I do ask about that since I know what types of exercises we do. I want to help guide you in the right direction based on your individual needs. So we will for sure go over that during our one on one. Um, but I know it sounds cliche and you've probably heard this before, but listening to your body is important in terms of if anything is painful, making sure that you're modifying as needed. And that's something where we do have that opportunity to ask questions both before and after class so that you can just say, hey, you know, let's say Steph is teaching your class, the physical therapist, you can say, hey, I was having a little pain in my shoulder when we did this exercise here. Is that normal? How should I modify? So that is kind of part of our membership is being able to get some of that feedback real time so that you don't feel like you're exercising alone and, and pushing something to, the, something to the point of injury. Um, so I do think that's a real benefit of us having our physical therapist teach the classes is being able to ask those questions before and after. Great Thank question, you. yes, because it is important to keep that in mind for sure. All right, well, any other questions? We're about at our time here and I wanna make sure everyone can kind of get off to their afternoon or evening plans, depending on your time zone. Do you have this program in New York City? Um, good question, in New York City, is that what you said? Mm -hmm. Good question. And let me actually go ahead and include that link here in the chat. Um, we recommend that people see, I know I mentioned seeing a physical therapist who ha is specialized in Parkinson's. So in order to find if someone in your area has been trained in this type of exercise, that's Parkinson's specific, I'm going to include the link in the chat that you all can um, click on. Parkinson Wellness Recovery is an organization. I just um, worked for them for the past seven years, actually, and we do trainings for therapists in how to exercise with people with Parkinson's. And so um, as physical therapists, we need continuing education units where we go to conferences and things. So if you click on the website, I just put in the chat, you can find a therapist who has been through that training where they've learned more about Parkinson's 
and um, are maybe starting something in wherever they live. We're doing those trainings virtually now, so we're able to get our reach out there even further. So I would recommend clicking on that website, entering in where you live and just see, is there anyone who's been through the training? Maybe they have a Parkinson's class or are a PT who can work with you one-on-one, -on -one, for example. Great question. All right. Well, thank you all so much for your time today. I really appreciate you being here. Um, I'm going to also just include in the chat here my email. So if you have any questions and you want to contact me, please do so. You can email me there. And um, I hope you guys join and maybe try out our exercises. We'd love to have you. Don't forget about that webinar 50 promo code. Um, looking forward to hearing from each of you and I hope you have a great rest of the day. Great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. It was good meeting everyone. Lots of people from New York today. Good job. That's a, that's a reminder to me. I got to visit my brother out there. <laughs> All right. Have a great rest of the day. And I look forward to hearing from you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, everyone.